Hey guys, it's Erin here and welcome back to my channel. So I'm very excited to make this video because I am going to the islands of Tahiti this evening. It's very cold and gloomy in California, so I'm pretty stoked for a little warm weather getaway and I will be traveling with the Tahiti Tourism Board. So there's a very fun jam-packed itinerary that they have planned for us, including the island of Tahiti, Bora Bora, Morea, and Tikahau. I've been to French Polynesia before, but I've only been to Moorea and the main island of Tahiti, so I'm very excited to do lots more exploring and adventuring of this beautiful place. And obviously during COVID, it's very important for extra safety precautions. So in order to even travel to Tahiti, there's a list of things that you have to do. The first thing is to get a negative COVID test result, and you specifically have to do the RT-PCR nasal swab test, and you need to get it done 72 hours before your departure. For me, I got mine done two days ago, and because I paid for rapid results, which is a bit more expensive, I paid $225 for this test. I got the results within 24 hours, and I printed them out, so I am good to go for that. The second thing you have to do is fill out the EDIS form online, including your arrival and departure date, your personal information, and your ID itinerary. And when you submit this form, you get a QR code, which you are required to scan at the airport. And this QR code links you to the self-administered COVID test that you receive upon arrival in Tahiti. So that brings me to the third thing you have to do, which is take a self-administered COVID test four days into your trip. It's really easy to do and you give the specimen to the hotel you're staying at or a specified healthcare center. And besides all of that, you are of course required to wear masks in public areas with large gatherings and to social distance as much as possible. So like I said, I'm leaving tonight and I'm still in the middle of packing so I want to show you guys everything that I will be bringing along with me. This is a media trip so a lot of what I'm bringing is camera related. So anyway, let's get packing. I'm packing my Aquatech water housing with a dome port to get underwater footage, a tripod, my gimbal stabilizer for my DSLR, and all of this goes into my Pelican Air carry-on case for extra support and protection while I'm traveling because this gear is really expensive and kind of fragile. So next in my other camera bag, I'm bringing my main Canon DSLR, a couple lenses, my drone, batteries for my camera and drone, my GoPro and GoPro accessories, and all of this fits into a camera backpack that I will carry on with me onto the plane. And now I'm packing my main suitcase. It's pretty easy packing for tropical destinations because I really only need a few light clothing pieces and swimsuits. Okay, so everything is pretty much all packed and ready to go. This is my main suitcase. It's from Douche Bags. I have my straw hat, some microfiber travel towels. These two bags have swimsuits in them. This bag has some toiletries. This is my adventure duffel bag. And I've got a tripod. This has all of my clothes. And I have some hiking shoes. And that's pretty much what's going in this main suitcase right here. And I always make sure to put a luggage cover on my suitcase because when I don't, they get absolutely wrecked. And this is brand new and I want to keep it looking that way. So I just put this black cover on it and it stays nice and protected. I'm also bringing my free diving fins and a snorkel mask. And that has its own bag right here. It's super long. This is one of the camera bags I'm bringing. It's also a backpack, but it has most of my camera essentials in here. And this is my carry-on backpack, and I put all of my airplane travel essentials in here. So I've got my COVID test result and QR code printed out there. I'm bringing my journal, a book for the plane and for any downtime. This is my wallet. And then I'm also bringing an international adapter. 
And then of course I'm bringing my passport. I just got a brand new cover and it's super cute. And I always bring my Japanese passport as well, even though I don't use it, but just to have it in case. In this front pocket, I just have a couple of masks. This one I like to use on the plane because it's super sanitized and wrapped in plastic. This one I like to use for being out and about. And then I've also got some vanilla coconut face wipes to keep fresh on the plane. And then I'm also bringing an eye mask and a neck pillow because this is an overnight flight and I'm gonna try to get as much sleep as possible. So it's about 6 p.m. right now and it's almost time to head to the airport. So I'm in my airport clothes and here is all of my luggage all ready to go. I will see you guys at the airport. Once on board the Air Tahiti Nui Dreamliner, the airline provided everyone with a sanitary kit that included extra surgical masks, sanitizer wipes, and hand sanitizer. Then it's just a non-stop red-eye eight-hour flight. So you go to sleep in LA and wake up in Papayete in the morning. Upon arriving in Tahiti, we gathered all of our baggage and met up with the rest of the crew that we were traveling with. The Tahiti Tourism Board created a very eventful and fun itinerary for us, and the first stop was Tia Popo, also known as the end of the road, and this is about an hour and 30 minutes away from the airport. We just made it to our little homestay at Tia Popo in Tahiti. Quite the journey to get here, but we there's are just settling down. in. Yeah, there's a lot of animals on this property. Peacocks, ducks, dogs, Geese. fish. Actually, there's like a koi pond out here. Very lush. So here's our cute little room for the night. And I believe we are getting ready to go on a hike right now, so I'm gonna unpack my stuff and freshen up, and we'll go on a little adventure. We started off the day with a tractor ride into the valley owned by the Levy family, a mode of transportation that I'm usually not used to in my daily life, so I loved every single moment of it. So we just took this tractor to get to this gorgeous valley where we will be having breakfast here in this area and there's a stream right here you can do a little bit of swimming and then I believe we're gonna go on a hike to discover the beautiful mountains the group enjoyed a delicious breakfast by the stream that consisted of fresh eggs pancakes various fruits coffee and coconut water that came straight from the tree if I could eat breakfast like this every single day I definitely would after our bellies were full, we began our hike into the valley. Our guide gave us a tour of the various plants in the area and told us stories of its uses in everyday life that dated all the way back to the first Tahitians that lived in the area. Right now, he's telling us about the candle nut, which he explains was used as light by the Polynesians. They would shell the nut out and put the inside almonds on a string and burn them. And each nut provided about four minutes of light. This tree has many other uses. For instance, the bark of the tree was used for medicinal purposes and can treat sore throats. And the candle nut was also used as ink for tattoos. It's an amazing thing to see people living off the land in this way because this abundant land and the oceans around it really do provide everything that they could possibly need. Stick your hand out there. Eh? And then we came across some friendly horses on the property that came to say hello. Gorgeous Arabian horses from New Zealand that absolutely thrive in this valley with this epic backdrop of the mountains. And finally, at the end of our hike, we reached our destination. A gorgeous waterfall to go for a refreshing swim. About this time, it started to rain, but it felt incredible, especially after an overnight airplane ride. At the end of the tour, we sat in the creek and listened to the story behind the name Tiapo'o, which translates to Wall of Heads. 
This area is famous for having the heaviest wave in the world, and it brings daring surfers from all over the world. But I didn't know much about the land and its history beyond that. I really enjoyed hearing more about its cultural history and gained some insight into Fenua Aihere, an area only accessible by boat or foot that we were going to explore more of the next day. Well, it is absolutely boring out there. Anyway, we are off to lunch across the street. Bonjour. Bonjour, ça va? Nice and dry. So we're now across the street for lunch at the home of Hitinui and Aimata. We're having a traditional national dish called poisson cru, which is raw pieces of tuna mixed in with sea salt, lime, coconut milk, and vegetables. On the side is cooked taro, and it makes for a delicious and traditional Tahitian meal. I love that. The next morning, we woke up at dawn to get onto Captain Cindy's boat. Today, we're in for a real treat getting to explore the rather untouched coastline of Fenua Aihere, which I mentioned earlier can only be reached by boat or hiking. With miles of jagged green mountaintops and waterfalls that are hundreds of feet long that empty out into the blue ocean waters, this part of Tahiti also inspired the animators of the Disney movie Moana, and it's easy to see why. Captain Cindy and her crew prepared a delicious breakfast for us on the boat, and I enjoyed a cup of coffee and some freshly made pancakes with an epic view of the sunrise coming over the mountains. There are a select few places in this world that make me in complete awe, and this is one of them. This coastline is natural beauty at its finest, with one marvel after the other. So we spent a very pleasant and adventure-packed day out at sea. Snorkeling, swimming through caves, jumping off cliffs, bathing in waterfalls, and just soaking in all of the views. And by the time it got to the afternoon when we ended our tour, I was definitely exhausted. In a good way, of course. But it was time to head back to the airport and catch a flight to Bora Bora. When you fly to Bora Bora, you want to sit on the left side of the plane so that you can really enjoy watching the islands below you as you fly over them. We flew during sunset and landed in the dark, so I didn't get to see the crystal clear blue waters that Bora Bora is famous for, but it was still a beautiful flight and I was so happy to be there, even in the rainy weather. We just had the most incredible couple days in Tahiti doing so much exploring. And we just now checked in to the Intercontinental Resort in Bora Bora, staying at a beautiful, massive overwater villa. It is nighttime right now and I'm quite spent from a very long day. So I'm going to be ending this vlog here, but stay tuned for the next vlog where I will be exploring Bora Bora for the very first time. Anyway, that is it for me with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and good night.